Hello, interns, researchers, and possible MTF personnel. I have to assume that since you have gained access to this classified document, that you are either a researcher that has been sent to help in researching this SCP, or you are an MTF unit that has been sent to recontain it after a possible breach. Either way, this document should help you perform whatever task you may be assigned to do. Now, let us continue. Item number, SCP-525. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures Outside of testing conditions, the individual components of SCP-525 must be stored in separate sealed containers. No more than six components may be stored in the same room, or within 15 meters of each other. All currently existing components are accounted for at Storage Site 23 and Lockers 2. Only Class D personnel are authorized to handle SCP-525. All supervising staff must wear protective eyewear during testing. Description SCP-525 consists of multiple disjointed anthropod legs, approximately 10 to 15 centimeters in length. DNA identification has been inconclusive, but the closest match so far is to the brown recluse spider. The base of each leg ends in several minute hooks capable of perforating flesh. SCP-525 is covered in short, fine hairs and is quite brittle. When alone or in proximity with fewer than six others, SCP-525 is inert. When eight components of SCP-525 are brought within range of each other, approximately 0.6 meters, the legs will immediately crawl into a group and attach themselves into a single entity, referred to as SCP-525-1. At this stage, the speed of its locomotion greatly increases, and it will attempt to make contact with the closest human or similar. See addendum number 525-A. When a suitable animal is found, 525-1 will climb directly towards the animal's eye. Having centered itself over the socket, four legs will secure the eyelid, while the others extract the eye. Despite 525-1's rapid movement, extreme care is taken not to damage the eye during the extraction, severing the optic nerves and central retinal veins. Once the eye is free from its original owner's socket, 525-1 will implant the base of each leg into the eye. Close inspection shows that the hooks at the base extend, effectively rooting the leg in position. If allowed to remain, 525-1 will lay what appear to be eggs in the socket of its host before climbing off. See addendum number 525-A. When in possession of an eye, 525-1 is no longer hostile and its movements are somewhat impeded. Curiously, 525-1 does not respond to visual stimuli, suggesting that it does not use the eye for sight. Dissection of a chimpanzee eye taken by 525-1 and retained for a period of one week revealed the formation of over time the eye dehydrates eventually turning the same reddish color as 525 after two to three weeks 525-1 will abandon the eye and begin to search for another addendum number 525-a 525 responds to most large, too moderate sized animals. Reptiles, fish, and birds have provoked little response. When exposed to Crocodilus actus, 525 1 attempted extraction, managing to blind the animal but otherwise failing. Thereafter, all instances of 525 have not responded to crocodiles, even those not present at the initial experiment. Document number 525 A Observation log of subject D1548 after exposure to 525-1. Report compiled by Dr. Weiss. Date, 20. Now, I do hope that this document will help in whatever your goal may be. Whatever it is, I wish you luck. And should you be a new researcher to the project, I do hope you enjoy your time here. Let us hope that you prosper afterwards. This is Dr. Rognir, signing off.